Welcome to Middlesex Moments, the radio program and podcast produced by faculty, staff, and students at Middlesex Community College. I'm Gail Barrett, Director of Enrollment Management, and your host for today's show. As always, Middlesex Moments comes to you from the radio and television studios in the Center for New Media, located on the main campus of Middlesex Community College in Middletown, Connecticut. In January of 2018, I stepped back from my role at the college and began working on a system-wide initiative known as the Guide Pathways Movement. Here with me today to share more information about Guide Pathways and how it will positively impact our students across Connecticut are three of my outstanding teammates in this work, Tamika Davis, Mike Bacilli, and Steve McDowell. Hi, I'm Tamika Davis. I'm a Guided Pathways Manager on loan from Tunxis Community College, where I was the Director of Admissions. Good morning. My name is Mike Buccilli. I am also a Guided Pathways Manager on loan from Gateway Community College, where I was Director of Counseling and Student Success. Hi, I'm Steve McDowell. I am a Guided Pathways Manager and also the Director of Financial Aid Services for the Connecticut State Colleges and University System. Great. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, I'd like just to take a moment and start the conversation going to share with our listeners a little bit more about the Guided Pathways Movement. Steve, I'm hoping you can start us off by talking about what Guide Pathways is and what are the basic principles of this work. Thanks, Gail. Bailey, Jaggers, and Jenkins made the Guided Pathways approach most famous in their 2015 book, Redesigning America's Community Colleges. Guided Pathways is a framework that provides all students with a clear set of course-taking patterns that promotes better enrollment decisions and prepares students for future success. This framework is accomplished through integrations of support services in ways that make it easier for students to get the help they need during every step of their college experience. When we think about guided pathways, it is best to think about it in terms of a structure of a home situated on four pillars with a sound foundation and a strong roof. The first pillar creates a clear curricular pathway for students towards employment and or further education. This is accomplished by simplifying students' choices with default program maps developed by faculty and advisors that guide students from start to finish. The second pillar assists students in entering the pathway by offering on-ramps to programs of study designed to facilitate access for students. This pillar is designed to help students explore academic and career options from the beginning of their college experience. This is supported by building in academic and non-academic supports in gateway courses like math and English. The third pillar helps students stay on their path by offering strong advising foundations that are embedded and ongoing in the Pathways experience. This pillar is also supported by technology to help students make informed choices, strengthen clarity about transfer and career opportunities at the end of the pathway, and ensures that they are able to develop an academic plan with predictable schedules, complete with monitored progress and interventions when they go off track. The last pillar of Guided Pathways ensures that learning is happening with intentional outcomes. This is done by establishing program-level learning outcomes that are aligned with the requirements for success in employment and further education in a given field, and by applying the results of learning outcome assessments to improve the effectiveness across programs. Covering the four pillars and our foundation is our roof, made up of student success and development, namely in the alignment of student success initiatives with faculty, professional development opportunities. At our foundation are our holistic student supports, which braces the pillars with intentional planning and integration of student academic and personal supports. This includes, for example, supports for academic advising, career planning, basic needs, mental health, and financial health. These are used as support structures and processes that enable students to progress from connection with a college through the completion of a valuable credential. By intentionally designing a student experience under the Pathways model, we can work to promote social equity, close opportunity gaps, develop holistic student supports, and create a student-focused institution that ensures its students are mastering the knowledge and skills needed to reach employment or transfer. Great. Thanks, Steve. And time is flying by already, and it's time for our first break. When we come back, more with Tamika, Mike, and Steve from Guide Pathways. This is Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Gail Barrett, together with my guests Mike Buccilli, Tamika Davis, and Steve McDowell. Before the break, we talked briefly about the Guide Pathways movement and its overall principles. So Mike, I'm wondering if you can share with our listeners why implementing Guide Pathways is so important to the students of Connecticut. Absolutely. So when we take a step back and look at our data, like most community colleges around the country, we have plenty of room for improvement. 
There are many ways to measure the success of Guided Pathways and other initiatives. One specific strategy that we've implemented is the release of a set of Key Performance Indicators, or KPIs. Typically, colleges look at long-term benchmarks to measure success, such as student retention and graduation rates. These are not timely and don't connect to the interventions or innovations that colleges are implementing. Our KPIs in Connecticut are based on a set of momentum metrics released by Bailey and Jenkins in 2017. There are three individual momentum factors, program momentum, gateway momentum, and credit momentum. Program momentum refers to the fact that students should complete nine credits within their major or program within the first year of study. Gateway momentum refers to students completing college-level math and English in their first year, and credit momentum refers to students completing 24 or up to 30 credits in their first year of college. Great. Thanks, Mike. When we talk about Guided Pathways, we also need to have a conversation about equity. Tamika, can you talk about how important equity is in this, in this topic? Sure, Gail. So Connecticut has one of the largest socioeconomic gaps in the United States, and education is a pivotal solution that can improve socioeconomic outcomes for Connecticut residents. So Guided Pathways is not only aimed at improving student retention and completion rates, but it also addresses inequitable practices regarding our underserved student populations. Too frequently, we find that the terms inclusion, diversity, equality, and equity are interchangeably used and thought to be the same. When equity is really about giving every student what they need to succeed. So this means that some students may require additional supports to begin and accomplish their goals. As higher education professionals, I feel that we are here to help students reach those goals. So defining and unpacking equity forces us to rethink student services and what it means to meet each student where they are examining the supports that can level access and opportunity for all. So understanding that some students may require or need more than others. So as we look at look to transform our community colleges to be responsive to the needs of various student populations, we must recognize and correct how bias and inequitable practices and policies have created barriers. So one inequity that is prevalent within our system is that students of color are not persevering or obtaining degrees at the same rates as our white students. So we've disaggregated data for our system, KPIs, and we've learned that only 8% of black students and 10% of Latinx students earn 24 or more credits in their first year of college compared to 21% of white students. So the data has been compiled and disaggregated for the 12 community colleges to understand issues of equity within our system. This data does include demographic information regarding race and ethnicity. So as our colleges begin to examine the data to understand issues of equity and disparities, we must explore and do a deep dive to understand things such as, you know, student academic outcomes. So who's succeeding and who is not? Our program enrollments, who's enrolled, who's missing? policies and practices, you know, who are the students who are being hindered and how are they being hindered? Things also such as student employment and livable wage outcomes, graduation and transfer rates, and access to student support services and resources. I think we all have stories of students that have had external barriers that they've had to overcome in order to continue to persevere through education. So issues such as um, transportation, child care issues, food insecurities and homelessness. So these types of stories really emphasize that there are external factors within our college structure as well as external factors that the students are dealing with that impact a student's academic success and the success of the institution equally. So students come to us because they want an education and most importantly access to a better life. So it's incumbent upon us to reimagine and develop a system that addresses the equitable needs of all of our students. The success of our students and our college hinges on our ability and commitment to make these changes. Thanks, Tamika. I mean, I think you've really proved the point that equity is a really critical point in this conversation that we cannot overlook when we're talking about guide pathways. Uh, Steve, I'd like to talk about how we actually are approaching this work in Connecticut. Can you talk about who's doing the work? I think the most important facet of our dive into guided pathways is that many of the diligent and dedicated students, faculty, professional staff, 
deans, presidents, and other content experts across our system are doing the work. And this is not just from the community college side. We have partners from our four universities and Charter Oak involved as well. To put a number on it, we have more than 200 active participants engaged in a number of teams and workgroups, and that number continues to grow. Let's talk about them for just a minute. Under the arm of the CSCU Student Success Center, our Guided Pathways work is being developed under three key architecture groups that are managed by stakeholders from our system, recruitment, choice, and holistic student support redesign. Given the abundance of overlap and intersection across these groups, it is best to think about the three architectures in terms of a Venn diagram. First, we have the recruitment architecture charged with using guided pathways, practices, and existing expertise to design policies and practices that streamline enrollment, as well as strengthen connections to pre-K-12, transfer institutions, and employers. Next, we have the choice architecture charged with using guided pathways, practices, and existing expertise to design and recommend policies and practices that facilitate student retention and completion through encouraging early choice and removing student success barriers. Finally, we have holistic student support redesign charged with using guided pathways, practices, and existing expertise to design and recommend policies and student support services that facilitate student retention and degree completion. As you have undoubtedly heard the intentional repetition, the key here in each of these architecture charges is that we are using existing expertise within our system that is to be leveraged with guided pathways practices in order to put this framework into place. We are doing the work together. Now, branching from the three architecture groups are a number of work groups, including first year experience, maps and plans, and career and transfer readiness. These work groups are tackling items related to the development of a new FYE course that has the working title of College and Career Success, the development of program maps and academic career plans for students, and practices related to meeting academic and career competencies to enter the workforce or to transfer to a four-year institution. We also have other work groups currently in development, such as the Website and Streamlined Application Work Group. This work group will be utilized in creating meaningful inquiry and enrollment experiences for students. We do have a lot of great support from various national partners too, including Jobs for the Future, Achieving the Dream, the Community College Research Center, the National Center for Inquiry and Improvement, and the Dana Center, just to name a few. We also have the full support of our Board of Regents to help make Guided Pathways reach its full potential here in Connecticut. Thanks, Steve. Uh, it's time for another short break. When we come back, more with Tamika, Mike, and Steve from Guided Pathways. This is Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Gail Barrett, along with my teammates from the Statewide Guide Pathways team, Mike Pacilli, Tamika Davis, and Steve McDowell. So let's talk about what's happening with the Guide Pathways movement to date. Tamika, can you fill us in on some updates about changes to our enrollment process? Absolutely, Gail. So streamlining the college enrollment process is going to focus on improving policies and practices that align with areas such as recruitment, pre-advising, admissions, financial aid, and registration. Creating stronger policies and practices that are guided by a student-centered focus and take into account our various student populations is key. So first, we're working on eliminating the application fee. So this has been identified in many ways as a barrier to access for our underserved students. So hopefully this will be approved by the Board of Regents and take effect for the 2019-2020 academic year for our incoming students. We will be developing a single admission application for all 12 community colleges credit and credit free students that simplifies the ability for students to go from a credit free course to a certificate or a degree program and helps us to be able to identify those students early on in the onboarding process to connect and support them in meeting their short term and long term goals. So helping to really move those students from our non credit courses into degree seeking programs, so associate degrees or certificate programs. So also to support the development of the online application, we will redesign the website. Our redesigned website will use strategic data informed processes and functionality to encourage student connection and exploration that engages and guides students in choosing the appropriate path. So we want to be responsive to their needs from the first point of contact. We want to ensure they can find what they need during their exploration of the college. And we want to assist them in understanding what their choices mean. 
So this would include the development of financial services that help students understand their financial aid package, along with other education-related costs and budgeting. So in the coming months, we'll begin working on initiatives to build and strengthen partnerships with K-12, adult education, employers, and community and nonprofit organizations. Collaboration is important. So I'd like to highlight that recently a data sharing agreement with the State Department of Education was approved. So we will be able to receive data for the high school student applicants that will allow us to better support these students in enrollment and identify wraparound support services that can make a difference in a student's success prior to them even attending their first class. So Keep in mind that Guided Pathways principles and practices will be a foundation for developing every facet of our onboarding processes, creating marketing and recruitment materials, as well as informing the layout and technical needs of the website. So during recruitment and onboarding is when students develop their first impression of who we are, and it's our job to put our best foot forward in ensuring that they are equipped with the tools to succeed, and they know that we care and are invested in their success. Thanks, Tamika. You just identified some really positive changes to the onboarding process that will help our students. Mike, I want to continue the conversation now and talk about the work we're doing that will help students to choose a path and then stay on that path. Absolutely. So this work began with the faculty creating program maps. These program maps are to help student decision making. The program map is more than just a curriculum sheet with courses on it. It includes a lot of critical information about skills, um, possible uh, transfer pathways, opportunities for employment. These program maps will serve as the key point for students to make a decision. However, we know that some students come into the college and are really still unsure, but they may have some interest areas. Then comes in the meta majors. One of the Guided Pathways principles of helping students choose a path is through the creation of meta majors. In the state of Connecticut, we polled our students in the community college and found that they prefer the term areas of study. There's currently a draft set of six areas of study in which each of the programs will fit underneath. This allows that student to make a selection in an interest area such as science and technology without knowing that they want to be a biology major. The student experience continues into a first year experience course, which was recently named College and Career Success. This course is unique in that it's a three credit course where it gives the student the time and space to explore, reflect, research, potential career and academic opportunities. At the conclusion of the course, the student should be a little more codified in their decision and choose a program of study. From there, the student creates an individual academic plan. This is an important piece. Once students are on an individual academic plan, now they know which classes they need to take in which order in order to reach their goal of completion. It also serves another key purpose in that in order for us to know how students are doing, are they on track to completion, they need to be on a plan. In comes technology. This will require that we integrate technology so that the student creates an electronic individual academic and career plan which is housed in a software system that allows advisors to watch the progress of each student. Keeping students on the path is the third pillar of Guided Pathways. So they're coming out of this first year experience course. They now have an individual plan and are assigned to an individual advisor um, who can watch the progress of the student. A team of faculty, staff, um, and administrators have come together under what we call holistic student support redesign. This is really a huge paradigm shift. It shifts from students opting in for advising and career development services to each student has a single point of contact who through technology and through communicating with their students can see the academic plan and can see the students who are making progress and those who maybe aren't. Those who are not making progress, it allows the advisor to intervene um, electronically or in person to let them know um, what options might be out there and to support them. It also brings in another a whole. It also brings in a whole host of other supports. Um, we call this uh, holistic support or um, wraparound services. Those are some of the terms you might hear um, interchangeably. But this really looks at the whole student. 
It's more than just the academic support they might need to complete the courses. It includes other supports for basic needs, for housing, food, um, transportation, child care. It also brings into factors such as mental and behavioral health. It allows that advisor or the faculty member in the classroom to uh, simply cl click and raise a flag or make a report that triggers kind of some action or intervention from the appropriate person on the campus. So really, to think about it holistically, the students are coming through in an onboarding process where from their first interaction with the college, they're starting to make some decisions, starting to think about their career trajectory. It is refined through that first year college and career success course. And then they are assigned with an individual faculty or staff member who serves as their point person through completion. Other states that have implemented this model have seen tremendous improvements in their retention and completion rates. And when students are polled, one of the number one responses they say is, we really want one single point of contact. We want to know who we can go to. And that is what this strives to do. It strives to provide a holistic wraparound support for students to ensure that they stay on plan and meeting their goal for completion. Thanks, Mike. I think that really gives a very you know, thorough and in-depth perspective of how we're really trying to reshape the work we're doing in Connecticut to make it more of a proactive model and really monitor our students to help them be more successful. And I know we've given our listeners a lot of information, and I want to make sure we refer them to our website. So, Tamika, can you tell us where our website is located? Yes, go. www.ct.edu backslash gp. Yeah, and it provides a lot of great information about the work we're doing as well as who is doing the work among our community college colleagues. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike, Tamika, and Steve for joining me today. And thank you, our listeners, for joining us in another edition of Middlesex Moments. As always, you're welcome to visit us in person at our main campus, which is located at 100 Training Hill Road in Middletown, or our Meriden Center located at Platt High School, 220 Co. Avenue, where we offer afternoon and evening classes four days a week. And of course, you can always visit us online 24-7 at mxcc.edu. For Middlesex Community College, I'm Gail Barrett. We hope to see you again soon.